of ground almonds. We have half a teaspoon of cinnamon. We have one full teaspoon of baking powder. Now if it's going to be gluten free, it would need to be gluten free baking powder in that dose. And then you've got one full teaspoon of mixed spice. Give it a stir, 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 stir. And in your sprinkles. Now, if you have a nut allergy and if you don't want to use ground almonds, you can use 100 grams of plain flour. Again, it can be gluten free flour. And you'd add 40 grams of breadcrumbs. Again, gluten free breadcrumbs. And you can do that with your company. But the ground almonds. The ground almonds keep this beautiful texture, almost sponge like. Now we've got our fruit simmering away. Just make sure that you're not going to forget it and give it a stir, stir, stir. And don't worry about the liquid because the liquid will be absorbed. The fruit rather will absorb most of that liquid. So you see as I pour out of the saucepan, the smell, lads, the smell is divine. So, all we've done. Thank you, Kenwood. You've been amazing. We've had our butter and we've had our brown sugar. And we've beaten that. We've added two eggs. So we have 100 grams of butter. And we have 225 grams of brown sugar. We've added our two free range eggs. We sprinkled in 100 grams of ground almonds along with our spices, which was one teaspoon of our mixed spice, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and one full teaspoon of our baking powder. Now I've used one brownie apple and I have just chocolate, chocolate grated. <laughs> I have grated the apple, not finely chopped it, it's been grated. In goes my grated one Bramley apple. <laughs> Leave it to you. So we have got this weird looking concoction if you want to have a look. It looks very strange and it looks as if there is no way that will come together as a plum pudding. But it is divine. Yes, I know I'm not using flour just because I don't like to use the flour because I'm telling you now the texture of this plum pudding is spring sprawny, it's not overly soaked in alcohol. I do not feed my plum pudding. So I initially have my batter for my pudding. The next thing that goes in is my delicious plum fruit. And all that goes in. So I've got my raisins, I've got my sultanas. I'm sorry, I do not like currants, so I don't put them in. I do not like mixed peels, so I don't put them in. So that's why I put in the grated um, zest of my orange and lemon and the apricots, because I love the apricots, the colour. So again, all I'm doing is giving this a stir stir. Now you must make sure that your fruit mixture is cold before you put it in to your container. The container I am using this morning is a two pint pudding bowl. And there you have the plum pudding. Kaboom! So you have your complete plum pudding, delicious fruit, gooeyness, ness, ness. Stir, 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 stir. I'm not an angel carry it, lads. Look at this, the drama this morning on a Sunday. Fantastic. Now, in the back, I have got my saucepan. Now, I have a metal scone cutter, and I will put that into the base of my saucepan. And I have a two pound, two pound, two pound, two pound pudding bowl. It has been greased with butter, and right down at the very bottom, I have a little disc of grease proof, and I have completely smeared that in butter as well. So the whole container has been smeared with butter, and I am literally going to pour this in. Now don't worry, you will look at this mixture and think that there is too much for this container. It doesn't because it compresses down. And you put every last dribbly drobbly bit. Do not think that this is too much for the container. It is not. And you just give it a stir, stir, stir. Just make sure that we have even lumps and bumps of fruit. And then just give it a pack. Our saucepan on the go. That now has our fruit, and that is done. I'm going to leave that there. Next thing I'm going to get is just our grease fruit. So I've got parchment paper on there. Parchment paper is fantastic because it just doesn't stick to anything. Clean as you do, get rid of everything off the seam. So when you have your grease fruit. 
through. What you want to do is you're going to create a little piece. And what that does is that if your plum pudding rises, it doesn't really rise this much. I'll show you when I, because I have prepared one earlier. All I've done is I've folded the crease and I do the same with my tin foil. And I get my pudding. And as I said, this is parchment paper. You can butter this side if you wish. I don't because you don't really need to. It's parchment and all I'm gonna do is loosely Cover this, get some twine. I will need my in denied glasses for this because I cannot see a dicky bird. And I have just a piece of twine or ribbon that I don't really use. I'm just going to wrap around the pudding. Oops, sorry. I'll do it from the front backwards even. I have to do it backwards. I'm trying a little knot. Make sure it's on. Now, twine is better. Do you think I could put my hands on my twine after me doing it yesterday? Not a chance. Hence the ribbon. But listen, whatever you can put your hand on. And see, most importantly, as I said, I can't see a dicky burger. <laughs> so give that a good old squeeze. Lads, make sure you have twine and not flimsy cake ribbon. Oh, don't you love this button? <laughs> don't you love it? Don't you just love it? So I'm going to give this another tidy. <laughs> twine, lads. Twine, twine, twine. Just about see this. I need second bite vocals. And I'm just going to bring it up. Create a little bit of a handle. Tie it in a knot. And again. And get rid of the excess because I don't need the excess for the scissors. Scissors, 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 scissors. Ah. Just give it a bit of a, a haircut. Get rid of the excess. You don't need the excess. Bam, 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 bam. Good, 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 good. Oh. And then we have our metal. And we look like a beautiful pudding. And in that goes. On to our little border. I have to put a little back one because it is lower. Let's put it down low. Grab my lid, which I forgot. Wow, wow, wow. Lads, four and a half hours. Wait until that comes to a bloop, 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 and time it for four and a half hours. That is your plum pudding. As I said, make sure you do have twine rather than flimsy cake ribbon to tie your plum pudding. But I'm telling you now, this plum pudding is divine. So, with what I have prepared earlier, So with the tin foil on and the grease proof, the smell is just, it just smells of booze. <laughs> so you know this pudding is going to be divine. So give it a chug, chug, chug. And it should come out like a good poo. <laughs> give it all. Lads, 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 lads. Nothing can do with justice. The smell is sweet, orangey, lemon. I will cut a section once I steam this because I am going to eat this today. <laughs> this could possibly be even for breakfast. Now, when you are storing your Christmas pudding, I keep it in the container in which it was steamed. I will get a fresh disc of grease proof and I will put the fresh disc of grease, no, of grease proof. I will put tin foil on that I will put the lid in which it came in. I will cling film it. I will cover it in tin foil, and that goes away for storage. Now I will not feed that plum pudding. There is enough food in that 
because you've got the sugar in the fruit, you have got the alcohol, the brandy, you've got loads of drink in there. If before you store it, you want to put one tablespoon of brandy, fantastic, but leave it alone. Don't need to feed your brandy. Other than that, you'll be pouring a slice of brandy for Christmas. Now what I am doing next week, just to give you a little heads up, we already did the fruitcake and the fruitcake was an eight inch round high fruitcake batter. That eight inch round batter will also do two six inch round fruitcakes. It will also do an eight inch square with four minis. Now in order to get the minis, the minis I'm lucky to have this particular tray or tin rather that has compartments. I also use a Bell Vita cardboard, you'll see, Bell Vita cardboard, and I cut it into two strips, one sits on top of the other, and that you can put covered in tin foil into your tin, and you then have little compartments that you can have in miniature cakes. So next week, I will be showing you how to ice, and just take this out because you can see how yummy these fruit cakes are. So we have a fruit cake ready to anand paste and we're going to ice it next week. The reason I'm doing the little miniatures is that the Coach Sugarcraft Guild are an amazing guild and they are donating miniature fruit cakes to the Lions Club and the Lions Club then donate them to these fantastic worthy causes every Christmas. So this is a four inch cake. It's the same method that will apply to six inch, eight inch, ten inch. So I will be showing you how to make anand paste and very quickly how to ice and decorate a fruit cake. So that's what we're going to be doing next week. So get cracking, get baking, poke out the fruit cake recipe. It will make two six inch round cakes. It will make one eight inch square with four individual fruit cakes. And if you decide to go for the eight inch round, it's a very high eight inch round. And that's because me nan likes them high. She likes the fruit cake high. So I have to do a high cake. So today was plum pudding day. We gave hugs and kisses to beautiful Beth and William and Gillian in the Netherlands. I am going to send Gillian, the super mum in Netherlands, a few recipes for her beautiful daughter, Beth. Because Beth, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to send you recipes and I'd love if you could judge me what the recipes are like because I hear you could be a little giggly when it comes to food. So I'm going to send some fantastic recipes but you must help your mum make them and tell me how you get on and send me photographs. So lads, ladies, lasses, dogs, cats, birds of the world, anyone who joined me today, continue the madness on A Touch of Magic 100 on YouTube. I shall see you next Sunday at 10.